2020 had no proper Nintendo Directs. And I mean, yes, we had a very good Mini Direct back in March, but no complete Nintendo Directs of the ones that we know, like E3, or ones that last 45 minutes, and so on. And I know that Don will disagree with me when it comes to that uh, first of those Direct Minis, who is also joining me uh, along with uh, Roger Space and Monster Mace. So I want to ask the big questions. Are the Nintendo Direct coming back properly in 2021? Here's what I think. There is either the possibility that they come back because they didn't simply had enough news, similar where in 2018 they didn't have enough news to really feel directs, and that's why during E3, like the majority of that E3 Direct was was Smash Brothers. Like, their entire 2018 lineup relied on three games, which was Pokemon Let's Go, Super Mario Party, and Smash Brothers. It was kind of similar this year, and I even think if there wasn't a pandemic going on, we wouldn't have gotten this year, because with Nintendo is always in pattern. There's ebbs and flows to it. Like, there's a very packed year, and there's a bit, bit of a lesser year. I think next year that will be that bigger year they would have to pump out a lot of information especially with the anniversaries of pokemon and zelda um so i do think the chance is ripe to do a lot more directs in 2021 are they going to do that though once again that is the million dollar question because they really they really haven't said as much they have said in investor meetings that they are looking at the future and they aren't sure about nintendo directs and i still think that's what they consider because with the direct mini partner showcase it felt that it was made out of necessity more than anything else we're kind of left in the middle not really knowing what's going on for next year yeah like i said i think they might follow the thing they did this year right where there were like specialty directs per game so you've already got the sakurai presents for the smash characters you had the mario 35th anniversary direct where we found out all the mario stuff i mean i'd expect the same thing next year for zelda i'm assuming there's going to be a lot of zelda news so i could expect like a zelda direct next year i think we're still going to get pokemon directs we had pokemon Pokemon Directs all throughout this year, even though some of them were shorter than we would like. Yeah, Pokemon Presents, whatever they're called. We're going to get more of those, I'm sure, going into next year as well, because it's also an anniversary year for Pokemon. Realistically, though, the way I see this going down is we got Bravely Default, and then that's when Bowser's Fury is coming out as well. I'm not expecting anything in terms of any Nintendo Direct-related thing until after both of those games have been released. And then even then, I feel like we might not even get one until after the release of Monster Hunter Rise. So Rise is coming out, what, the end of March? I think that's another really big push for them and i think that's really when we'll start to see more announcements coming out of nintendo you know in the previous discussion we did uh conrad had mentioned when do we expect the next smash character to be announced after this i really feel like we're looking at a smash announcement inside of a spring direct around april and the other reason why i think it's going to be a full-on direct in spring of next year is because i truly believe we're getting switch pro next holiday i really like am in the mindset switch pro is going to be their big holiday thing it's going to launch with breath of the wild 2 it might have come out around March next year had, you know, this pandemic not happened. And then that ends up being their big holiday release. Here's where I slightly disagree because it's easy to look at these uh, the numbers of this. So the chipsets that are made for, this, for the Switch and any, everything else, they've been wrapping up production like insanely fast for no apparent reason whatsoever. Even it doesn't come out exactly in March anymore. I think there is still a possibility that it co comes out the first half of 2021. Well, that also would not be unprecedented because they did that with the DSi and other stuff as well. That goes to show that we'll probably need a big mainline one to outline all of that. And I don't think they're necessarily going to, you know, just drop that in the middle of a regular direct. They might call it something else. They might call it the Switch Pro presentation or whatever. And then we'll end up seeing a lot of different projects announced in it. But I think that whatever that ends up being will be sort of the placeholder for the directs that people have been waiting for for so long. As far as we know about 2021 and what has been confirmed specifically from uh, games that have been developed first party by Nintendo, it's Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser Fury. February 12th, and after that, we have no first-party Nintendo games again, much like well, what we experienced for much of 2020. Obviously, published by Nintendo, we have Bravely Default 2, which is also coming out the same month, but then if we look at March and April and so on, we, we don't see anything until Breath of the Wild too far out there on the horizon. I was about to say, I honestly think that if they do a Nintendo Direct, it needs to be at the end of February. Well, obviously, we have the uh, Zelda's anniversary stuff coming on. Like, if, if they have something big planned for that, like 
like a lot of ports and a lot of uh, other. The hard thing about this whole ordeal is that what actually constitutes as a Nintendo Direct, because they have kind of rebranded the whole idea of it. Like a Direct used to be just a huge lineup of different stuff, but nowadays we have spe like franchise specific Directs, we have the partner showcases, which in my opinion shouldn't even carry the Direct name because it's so different. I, I still think they, they have a place there with the partner showcase being a Direct because it's still stuff from their partners also from second party studio so there's still a range there that they can allow themselves to just drop one at the middle of nowhere so i think that's okay to have oh yeah but basically any pr move which is pre-recorded could be stamped with a nintendo direct it's just that the fan reaction to them was very negative back then i, d I do think if they didn't ha uh, hadn't called it a direct right people just it. need to get used to this and i'll tell you why when directs first came out back in October 2011, the way that NCL or Nintendo in Japan did directs and the way that NOA in America did directs were very different because the way that Nintendo of America did directs were about like 11 minutes to 20 minutes. Like the first five directs from Nintendo of America were done in like 15 minutes. The ones done by NCL were always, always over a half hour or longer. Always. And sometime at the end of 2012, they, with Europe also coming into the mixture, they decided on a longer format to showcase a large variety of games. That's what they had to format at the end, until the end of 2016. When 2017 came around and the Switch became a thing, and they still needed to do to, do to the 3DS games, they did the headline format, which I think is a way quicker way to showcase games, like a large variety of them. It's snappier and to the point. Um, regardless if you put the handle Partner Showcase on it, or if it's a proper Direct, or just a proper Direct Mini, regardless of what you do, it's over before you know it. Like, it's 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 a snap and you think about it. It's it's not that hard to see how that could be their future marketing tool, even if they don't do proper Nintendo Directs anymore and just focus them on a theme or just on a mini or on for second party and third party offerings. So I'm going to take all this knowledge that you now have shared uh, in regards to when you think it's going to happen, the Zelda anniversary, the Pokemon anniversary, and also the long forgotten Metroid anniversary, which is also happening next year, and uh, say uh, the following. Um, we have indications, as uh, Don mentioned, that um, the Switch Pro might be f closer than we think. And that might actually point to February being a big month, which Nintendo might, might focus because I have this feeling that when they decide to bring back Zelda is also when they are going to show the Switch Pro. It's all about showing the graphical leap as well when it comes to, to the next hardware. And then they also maybe want to bring back some other graphic intensive franchises uh, like say the Monolith Soft's ne next IP that has been teased for years now without any kind of information. If we look at the last new game they launched, that was Xenoblade Chronicles 2. That was in 2017. But we also need to realize that in that time, they also make Torna. And they're helping with development with Breath of the Wild 2. And we got the definitive edition of Xenoblade as well. The question is, maybe it's more of a likely to be a game in 2022. They need games there as well. Metroid Prime 4 most likely is going to also fall down in that slot as one of the late Switch games because we're now at the midpoint of the Switch generation and we're talking about the second Zelda which is probably the one that is the closest out of the ones that we have little to no information about. We know also that Bayonetta 3 was revealed a long time ago, the Game Awards in 2017 to be precise and then we've heard little to nothing about it since, since then. Honestly what I think happened with in regards to Bayonetta 3 is that they had a change of heart regarding either the gameplay scheme or the story and we haven't heard it since because they don't want to show anything. I, I think the same thing too. I feel like they probably just changed something crucial to the game itself and they're waiting because they the Switch like you said it's not going anywhere. We're at the midway point right we're about to get Switch Pro it's it's getting updated like we're, we're in the portion of the era right where we had DS and then the DSi or the 3DS and the 3DS XL it's like we're, we're coming in on that point. On the topic of, okay, let's assume Switch Pro is happening then. I still think if you're looking at like a schedule of if we're having major directs, I think like the big presentation, I, we, I think we're all in agreement at the earliest end of February, the latest some point in spring, right? Then I'm assuming 
we'll most likely get a, a major group of announcements, even if there's no E3, right? I think there'll be some type of major group of announcements sometime in summer. And then we'll get another major group of announcements either in a direct or shadow dropped on Twitter, like what we got with Age of Calamity and Paper Mario around the fall, moving into a launch late in the holiday. And I think that's it. I think the other thing to keep in mind though, is that the one major company that still people aren't really talking about when it comes to anniversaries is Pokemon, right? We already know Pokemon Snap is coming to the Switch. We know that. We know there's a new Pokemon Snap game. We know, because they already announced it years ago, Detective Pikachu is coming to the Switch and a sequel to Detective Pikachu is coming to the Switch. We know there's most likely going to be some type of major mainline Pokemon game, then you've got a mainline Pokemon game that's going to be happening at the end of the year because of course it's going to happen whether it's a remake or a new gen or whatever we're going to get that at the end of the year and I think whatever new hardware or announcements or things they're going to plan their holiday around I think will revolve around Pokemon in a big way um, and not just Zelda obviously you know we're all Zelda fans Conrad is mostly a Zelda channel so of course we're going to talk about Zelda but I think it's very important to not forget Pokemon we're going to get eventually to, to Zelda in uh, one of these four videos uh, but the, the thing is I want to just stick to the Nintendo Directs. Let's try to point out specifically if we're getting a proper and I mean a big Nintendo Direct. Once again I think that's the million dollar question because they have multiple ways of doing it. Like, like I laid out earlier they, the way that they're doing Directs now it's very different since 2017 and even that has evolved a little bit. I think they could alternatively yeah. they don't decide not to do Directs next year just do a, a big Switch Pro presentation because the Switch Lite you could do a YouTube video. But with Switch Pro, you need to explain the graphical leap. And that is also, I think, a very good transition point to the big Switch Pro discussion, where we'll be talking about specs, which games should push Switch Pro more than anything else. And of course, uh, when we can expect it sometime this upcoming year 2021 which has to have more first party games than this one summarizing it up i think that uh the whole partner showcase thing might come back because we have a lot of third party games persona 5 strikers monster hunter rise no more heroes 3 which was delayed out of 2020 we have other games also that were announced at the game awards uh, which i don't have in my head right now uh, but the lineup is looking pretty good in terms of solid third party support at least until the summer of uh, of 2021 and we'll talk in the next video about why the switch pro is so important for nintendo in the coming year so be sure to leave a like subscribe if you haven't already to all of our four channels that being commonwealth realm roger space nintendon and monster mace and also press that uh, no notification bell again for all notifications anyway we'll see you in the big switch pro video